Hello, or maybe I should say hola. I'm obviously not coming from my home studio today. I'm actually in Ibiza at the minute. If you listen closely, you can hear the pounding of distant dance music. Or maybe that's the sound of my sangria-induced headache. Who knows? But one thing that we do know is the inflation data for the UK, as that's come out today. And I just want to report on these figures quickly for you and let you know what's going on. And let's just be honest straight off the bat, it's not good. So in my last video, I said this. And what we're looking for is a sharp decline away from the 10.1% in the headline data rate, which is all the inflation, including energy and food. We want to see that dropping as energy price data falls out of the calculation. And most importantly, we want to see what has happened to service-based inflation and also the core numbers excluding food and energy. Are they down or are they up? As that's the persistent sort that we need to worry about. Okay, let's just start with some good news. So the overall inflation figure, as measured by CPI, is a figure that we wanted to see start to fall away sharply. That figure is now below 10% at 8.7%. At 8.7%. This is higher, though, than the Bank of England forecasted even just a month ago when they said they expected it to be 8.4%. But this just continues a trend from the Bank of England to miss their own forecasts. But, you know, regardless of that, it's true that inflation has fallen. But we expected this to happen. This decline has nothing to do with the actions of the bank and everything to do with energy prices falling and also due to the data falling out the calculation period from last year. But lower inflation is what we wanted. We wanted to see a fall away in the headline rates and that has happened, which is good news. But really, that's where the good news ends. If we examine the ONS data, which I've linked below for you, we can see the worrying trends of rising core and service-based inflation, as I mentioned in my last videos, continuing to creep up. The ONS points to upward effects coming from recreation and culture, alcoholic beverages and tobacco, communication and transport being the main drivers of this growth. So if we just dive into the numbers around core inflation, which is inflation after you strip out energy prices and food, we can see that core inflation has risen from 6.2% to 6.8%, showing just how sticky this element of the inflation continues to be. And the continuing of this worrying trend of cost rising, adding further fuel to this theory that prices are spiraling. This 6.8% figure is the highest rate of core inflation that we've seen since 1992. Some things that stick out if we look at the individual components that make up this inflation is the cost around recreation and culture and communication. They all seem to have been rising quite a lot. But if we look at essential spending as well, the trend is just as worrying. The inflation rate on food still sits at 19.1%, down from 19.2%, which means food prices continue to rise at a disgusting rate. The Bank of England are now coming under increasing pressure, as rightfully so everyone's sitting there going, why can't you get a grip of this? In one recent meeting, I think it was on Tuesday that the Bank of England had with lawmakers and policymakers, someone was quoted as saying the following to them, your inability to tackle the inflation problem constitutes woeful neglect of duty. Call it neglect, a failure to act quick enough, incompetence, or maybe the UK just faces circumstances that the rest of the world doesn't. Whatever the reason for this, we need to acknowledge now that the UK has the joint second highest inflation rate in Western Europe and the underlying core inflation, which I called the persistent sort that we need to worry about, is rising. And as a result of this, we can expect the Bank of England to crank up interest rates in an attempt to combat this. The markets think we'll end up at 5% and we could see a raise to 4.75% in June. Will that help? I don't know. On one side of the argument, you can say the actions of the central bank have done absolutely nothing to slow down inflation at this point. And any reduction in the headline rate is more just due to external factors like energy prices falling. On the other side of the argument, though, you could suggest that it takes time for these rates to feed through into the system. And we just have maybe haven't seen that yet. The one thing that is certain is the Bank of England are coming under increasing pressure now to get this sorted. Andrew Bailey said in the recent interview, I think we've learned some very big lessons about how we operate monetary policy in the face of very big shocks. Not really what you want to hear from the captain of the financial ship, is it? Essentially, oh yes, we have learned lots of lessons about how not to react to this sort of thing. Let's hope that they don't learn too many more big lessons whilst on the job and we see an improvement in these figures on the next round of data. So look, I'm sorry the tone of this video isn't all that positive. I'd love to bring a bit of Ibiza sunshine to your life right now. But at the end of the day, I said last week that I was going to be looking to Wednesday as an important date for inflation and where the country's heading short to medium term. And what I'd be looking for is the core and service-based data. And if that's rising, I would say that that was a worrying trend. We're here right now and it's doing exactly that. So, you know, it is what it is at this point. But anyway, that's enough of me. Have a lovely day, guys. Lovely week. And I'll speak to you in a few days when I'm back home. Thank you.